Good morning. It is great to be here in Williams today. I always enjoy and appreciate an invitation uh, to be here, whether it's just to worship or a chance to, to preach. You know, I was doing my Facebook uh, check-in this morning, as I am required to do by obligation, you know. Um, I arrived and I did my Facebook check-in, and I had to resist the urge to say, worshiping with one of my favorite uh, CBF churches. Um, so I just said, I deleted the favorite part and just said one of, but I will tell you since it's just us here, right? Uh, this really is one of my uh, favorite congregations, and there are several reasons. And one of them being, and I probably have said this before, is that I am um, always amazed at the kind of uh, the folks who have traveled through here. Um, people like Barry Howard, you know, pastor of First Baptist Pensacola, where I, where I grew up. Barry, uh, an extraordinary preacher. People like Mike Oliver, you know, at Trinity, another one of our amazing Alabama CBF uh, pastors. People like Chris Thomas, who... In case you didn't know it already, you have an extraordinary pastor. Uh, the man is brilliant, and he is charismatic, and uh, he's super friendly, and everyone loves his grandma stories, right? I mean, you can't get better than, than Chris Thomas. I went to his breakout session at the CBF General Assembly uh, this past week and just sort of sat in awe as he shared his wisdom about preaching um, and about caring for your congregation. And... You know, y'all have uh, given these pastors and many others a great chance to thrive, to feel nurtured and loved and encouraged here. So that's one of the reasons you're my favorite. One of the other reasons you're my favorite among the minis is Holly Smith. You sent her to us uh, last summer, and she did an extraordinary job as one of our interns, uh, sowing seeds of hope, caring for the people there, and uh, assisting our churches as they came in and out of Perry County during the summer. In fact, you were there last summer. Many of you were. We had something we called the All Church Challenge, where we, it was an attempt to get every one of our Alabama CBF churches in Perry County before the summer was over. And the sort of capstone event was the All Church Challenge. Well, we really should have called it the All Williams Challenge because 90% of the folks who participated in that event were y'all. It was something like 60 of y'all were there. And one of my favorite moments of that weekend was we, we painted, we gave the school there a new fresh coat of paint. Some of us worked on that project together. There were many things that y'all did, but that was one of them. And in the center of the school, there is a coat of arms that was painted years ago with great care, and it's beautiful. And so as we repainted the walls, they left the coat of arms there. But in, in the sort of the different pieces of the coat of arms, the the same color, the color, the base color, you could see it peeking through the original. So there was a disconnect. So the coat of arms was there, but no one had cut back in uh, the coat of arms, and it was going to take some effort. And so Nikki, I'm not sure how long she was there, but this tiny little brush, you know, cutting it back in. And I said, that's amazing. I can't believe you're taking the time to do that. And she said, well, if I don't do it, if we don't do it, who's, who's going to do it? Nikki's one of the reasons I love Williams uh, so very much. I would be remiss if I didn't uh, extend to you greetings from Terry Bird, the coordinator of Alabama CBF. Uh, she's my boss and my friend and your friend, and she has been here many times, but she texted me this morning and said, please tell them that I said hello. Uh, in just a minute, I'm going to share with you some stories of Alabama CBF and some of the things that we are doing, and therefore, by extension, some of the things that you are doing. Uh, but will you pray with me first? Let's pray together. God, we are thankful for this day and for our lives in it, for an invitation to another chance, another chance to love you better, to love our neighbor better, another chance to share all of the abundance of goodness that you have given us. Call us to faithfulness and give us the strength to be faithful in this day. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Being the coordinator of Alabama CBF, or the associate coordinator rather, means I get to travel around and tell some stories that you may not have heard yet. Uh, most of our work, a lot of our work, has, takes place in uh, Perry County, and you may know that Perry County is the, the poorest county in Alabama. Something like 49% of the residents in Perry County uh, live um, in poverty. And 25 years ago, or a little under 25 years ago, uh, Alabama CBF, in, com in, in partnership with a few other organizations, made a commitment to, for a quarter century of partnership in, in Perry County and sowing seeds of hope 
the organization that we work with in Perry County, that is the result um, of that decision to partner. And it's also the place where Holly worked last summer. It's the place that you partnered with in the church challenge as you came and built ramps and, and worked at the school painting and uh, caring for the community there. I wanted to sh share with you a, a story about one individual from Perry County. Her name is Nicole. Uh, Nicole had children earlier than was ideal. Uh, it sort of prevented her the opportunity to finish her, her edu college education. She was taking care of a baby and she was keeping them fed and housed. And in Perry County, as some of you saw as you drove around last year, you know that finding a good place to live isn't always easy. A lot of places to, for rent, but that aren't necessarily adequate housing. You've probably heard some of these stories of, of people who have a, a roof over their head, but that's about it. Uh, they're not very good roofs. There are mostly buckets out holding up the rainwater as it drips in, and uh, many of them have to use uh, bathroom facilities that aren't a part of their home. There was one um, older woman in, in Perry County who was helping us, volunteering with us, helping us to build some of the self-help housing homes that we are uh, partnering with the U.S. government and with Sewing Institute of Hope to build. And as she was partnering with us, we learned that she um, had to go outside to use a water hose because she had no indoor running um, water. And thanks to the work of Alabama CBF and your contributions to that, we were able to get her into a brand new home. Uh, with running water and a roof that doesn't leak, that stays warm in the winter and is pro appropriately cooled in the summer. Well, Nicole was, was like this lady. Nicole had a dream. She hoped one day to be a nurse. She wanted to go to college and, and be a nurse, but there was no time between taking care of the, of the baby and uh, keeping the, the roof over their head such as it was. Uh, it was, a full, was all, she could, all she could manage. There was no more money to, or time to do tuition or... Um, to take classes. But along the way, the program that we call, that is called Self-Help Housing in Perry County came along, and for those of you who aren't familiar with it, it's a program by which, uh, through government-backed loans and through the assistance, the application assistance of uh, the staff at Sewing Seeds of Hope, folks can uh, apply to, have, to be a first-time homeowner. And sort of like Habitat for Humanity, in a way, you've got to put a little in yourself. So we build them in community. And so we build five or six of them at a time. And no one gets their keys until everyone gets their keys. So everyone participates in building and landscaping, doing what you can to build your house. And when every house is completed, everyone is given their keys. And a new community, a new neighborhood is born from the work and from uh, the proximity of, of living together. And Nicole was one in the first round of these homes, now five years ago. Since then, without the added expense of a ridiculously high uh, heating and cooling costs, which she was experiencing in her rental property, and with a reasonable and lower uh, house payment than her rental was, a little space, a little bit of money opened up for her, and she was able to begin nursing school. And she just completed nursing school and passed her board, and is now volunteering with Sowing Seeds of Hope with some of the extra time she has. That is a remarkable, in my opinion, success story. And you have probably never met Nicole. She, I don't know if she'll ever find her way here to Williams, but you helped her. The money that you give sacrificially through the missions offering to CBF, we take that and we use it to help build these homes, to help support So Institute of Hope as they build these homes in Perry County. And you were part of that. I want to tell you another story about uh, a woman named Miss Kelton. She's connected to one of the schools that is near one of our CBF churches. And because of the reputation of CBF of Alabama to be able to help in times of financial and emergency distress, when, when the principal found out that Miss Kelton, single mom with four children, when the principal of their school found out that they had become homeless, essentially they moved into a one-room extended stay uh, hotel near the school. You see, they had been living with Grandma and with Grandma's help, they were able to, to have a roof over their head and pay the bills and feed the children. But when Grandma died, Mom was on her own. And they lost the house. And they lost their ability to provide for the children. But with the help of the school, even in the, the crammed, cramped quarters of the little hotel, they were able to keep everyone fed. You know, the school provides lunch and breakfast. And our school also, this school also packs uh, 
um, lunches and food to send home with the kids at night, so everyone, they're fed all day long thanks to uh, the generosity and the care of this school and those around it. But when summer came, it became too much for the mom. There was four kids at home again, eating all three meals at home. And so when they ran out of food, she called the principal and said, I, I don't have anything to feed my kids tonight. So the principal, just as, an aside, as a side note, being a generous person, said she couldn't go home to her four kids and feed them until she knew that those four kids were fed. So she took them a little food, and then on her way home, she called me and said, Lucas, I know you work for Alabama CBF. Is there anything you or any of your partner churches could do? And I said, yeah, there's something we can do. We can, we can help right now. We can, I made a phone call to one of our CBF pastors there and connected this family with them, and Alabama CBF pledged, along with that church, to match funds. The funds we pledged to match were funds that you gave us, funds that you sacrificed and put into the offering plate and said, go take, use these to help those who are in need. And that's exactly what this partner CBF church of yours is doing, what Alabama CBF is doing. And now this family has adequate food. And now this family has a partner of this church and the folks that have gathered around her to help her as she looks at apartment complexes that she can afford and works her way through the application uh, process. Because even applying to get an apartment costs money, right? It costs money to put the application in. So how can you put the application in when you don't have the money to feed your kids? But thanks to the work of Alabama CBF partner churches, just like you, um, the strain has been taken off enough that she be can begin looking down the road. And these churches, this church is negotiating with the apartment complexes to help find this the perfect place for her and her four children to be. And you did that. Miss Kelton, her kids will probably never find their way here to Williams, and you may never meet Miss Kelton. But you've helped change her entire world. And it continues. Work all over uh, CBF, all over Alabama CBF life is because of you and churches like you. And it, when I think of the scripture this morning, when I think of Jesus' words and talking about welcoming uh, those who welcome me, welcome the one who sent me, those who welcome the prophet, welcome the one who sent the prophet, those who welcome the righteous, welcome the one who sent the righteous. Even if you offer the cup of cold water to one of these little ones, the promise is that your reward is, is guaranteed. I think about Williams, and I think about our work as a cooperative Baptist fellowship. I think about the promise of not just reward, but the, the promise of the kingdom the work of the kingdom being done, being built around us. The work of Jesus being carried out by our own hands sometimes, but also by the resources that we are able to share with others. When you read this passage of scripture, sort of the implication, maybe the, the direct uh, implication would be that if you're welcoming Jesus, you're welcoming, you're welcoming God. If you're welcoming the prophet, you're welcoming the one that sent the prophet, God being the divine presence, if you welcome someone, you welcome the divine presence of God. If we believe, if we believe, I think we do, that uh, each of us made, are made in the image of God. Each of us are children of God. By welcoming someone, by showing generosity and hospitality, we are doing that for the divine presence of God. We are recognizing the divine presence of God in someone else. And our promise, uh, the guarantee that Jesus makes is the promise of a, of a guaranteed reward. And he remains pretty vague about the reward. I think in our head, most of us start thinking about heaven, right? We think about um, the, the hereafter and uh, the, the golden streets and uh, the perpetual blue skies and no need for air conditioning and the humidity of the summer anymore. And we think of heaven, but Jesus is vague about it, and um, I, I tend to, I like to think, I like to be to think a little more specifically, especially if I'm, if I'm, um, you know, if I'm preaching a sermon or um, talking about the, the what comes next. Like, so we do this, and and this is what comes from it. Uh, and really, when I think about Williams, it, it's pretty easy for me. James Baldwin, the famous American author. Um, He's an author and poet. He said this, um, Children have never been very good at following the instructions of their elders, but they never fail to imitate them. Has that been your experience? 
You know, last summer when we were in uh, Perry County with your church group, there were some of your youth there, and we had to take some stairs, these very heavy stairs, out of a truck, and we were, we were putting them in the truck or out of the truck, and I can't remember at which point it was, but at some point there was some pieces of these stairs that were hanging off and needed to be removed in order for us to do with them what we had to do, and so these teenagers of yours just grabbed the the tools, the, the saw that was sitting there, and just went to town and did what had to be done, just picked it up as if it was second nature, got it done, got it loaded up in the truck, and we got it to where it needed to be. And I was remarking to Chris about that, and he said, oh, that's Williams. That's how it works. They all see it. They all learn how to do that, and that's just being from Williams. Well, it's not being from Pensacola, Florida, I'll tell you that. But your children are watching you. They're watching you and the things you know how to do with your hands, but they're watching you and the way you are generous. They're watching you in the way you show hospitality to the stranger, the way you care for those who you do not even know. You know, the end of this passage of scripture makes it sound like it's saying, even if you do something as simple as give a cup of water to a child, your reward is guaranteed. But really, if you think about it in context of the day, well, First, I should tell you this, that if you're reading the original Greek, you know, I can't do that, but your pastor can because he's so smart. And um, smarter folks than I am have, have read it and written it down and have said this, that the original Greek there leaves out the word cup. It just says if you give a, if, sorry, leaves out the word water. If you just give a cup of cold, the water is sort of implied. If you give a cup of cold, um, it's the emphasis on the cold. If you're walking around in those days, you don't have, you know, insulated thermos with you. You're going to walk over to the fridge and stick it up underneath the spigot and have it dump cold water running through, you know, your refrigerator into the cup. In order to give someone a cup of cold, in order to give someone a cup of cold water, you've got to do some work. You've got to go to the well. It's not going to come out of the pouch on the side of your, uh, your satchel. It's not going to come out of uh, the cistern sitting at your house. It's going to have to come from the bottom of the well where the water is still cold. To give someone a cup of cold is a sacrifice. To choose to go and be involved in missions, as you choose to do regularly, is a sacrifice. It means giving time up away from work and from home. Choose to give to the mission offering. It means sacrifice. It means giving that money away when you could be using it for something else that benefited you. Or even benefited this beautiful place. You have said, no, we're going to take this and we're going to send it out. Even if you give a cup of, just a cup of cold water. It's a sacrifice. And Jesus promises the reward. And I suggest to you that it may be heaven, but your reward you see being lived out in front of you every day as a kind parent raises kind children, as a generous, hospitable church raises generous and hospitable children. You're able to witness a bit of your reward Every day that you come in and out of this kind and wonderful place. I told you, Williams is one of my favorite churches. It's because I read about you in scripture. It's because I hear about you when Chris tells me stories about the way you care for those in your neighborhood. I, I see it on Facebook when there's a tragedy in the community. And your ministers come down here and open up the church so that if anybody who needs to gather can be here with someone else, they won't be alone. I've heard about when people die in this congregation, that it's one of your traditions to gather for the men to throw off their jackets and to gather with their shovels and their tools and to dig the graves by hand together. You know what it means to welcome, to be generous, to be people of hospitality. You know what it means to share and show the love of Jesus Christ in, in your own hometown, in your own pews of your church, but also in all the places you are connected to. I just felt like someone should come down here today and say thank you. Thank you so very much for being the hands and feet of Jesus Christ and for making sure that Alabama CBF and other partner CBF churches all over the state can be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ by sharing your love and your resources. Amen.